Welcome to 360 Strong Women. Today we're doing another yoga tutorial. This is the second series of the equanimity series, which is a balancing series. So the first balancing tutorial that we did, a tree and standing leg raise and decasana airplane. We did those three balancing right left poses. When you go through equanimity, uh, when you go through these balancing poses, you can mix and match them or you can do them all together in your sequence or you can blend them through your practice. We're going to learn eagle and standing split and dancer pose and consider using your blocks. So you'll want to get your yoga blocks and consider that it is a practice, not going to nail it exactly. It takes practice and time to get the alignment for these positions. So just be gentle and kind to your body, be gracious to yourself. What I always like to say is space and grace. You're not in a competition. This is your practice. You don't have to worry about who's on the right, who's on the left, and what they're doing in class. You're just trying to have alignment so that you don't hurt yourself and then get into these poses. And perhaps you'll decide out of these six asanas, so I'm breaking it down into two series. So you can go into playlists if you haven't already like, subscribe, and share to our channel. Give it a big thumbs up. I appreciate it. You'll notice in the first one, tree, I broke it down. You can start with just doing one or decasana. Those were the little simpler ones. Now getting standing leg raise, you can just hold your knee. You don't always have to get all the way out into that lengthy standing leg raise, but it's something to progress and work towards. And then we're going to do these today and I'm gonna give you some options as well. So I wanna warm you up just a little bit and then we're going to get into it because we're only doing the three today. I wanna to really break them down for you. So go ahead, get your mat, make sure you've got plenty of water, recommending always yoga blocks so that they give you access for your body right, to bring earth up to you and just give your body access. We, we never want to force your body into the pose. We want to make your pose part of your body. And in doing so, remember we talked about right and left sides being in balance, right? We're perfectly imperfect. And for some of us, we may be less flexible on one side than the other because perhaps you had an injury along the continuum of your life and you've got some scar tissue so it, it limits your range of motion. It doesn't have to look exactly perfect but you're going to work towards it and that could just be I need to work my shoulder opening more so that I can get my bind. I can't get a perfect bind just because my shoulders are wide and they, they just don't do it that way so I work it two different ways. And then hips, right? So shoulders and hips, always working on it. And then you're standing on one leg. So it's a balance pose. So let's go ahead, get warmed up a little bit, and then we'll be ready to do the tutorial. So you're gonna start in your child's pose or your trio pose. And big toes touch. I'm not gonna go through the sequencing or the alignment of these poses because there's tutorials in the playlist. So you can go through those. If you've just bumped into this video and you're not sure about the poses that we're doing now, there's a tutorial for all of them already. So just go back in the playlist, go through the tutorials, practice those. And then at the end, we'll start putting these flows together. And there are already some yoga flows in there. So if you're already a practitioner, go for it. So just take your child's pose, begin to breathe in and out through your nose. 
lengthen through the spine. We want to open up our body and open up our spine. As you breathe in, you're going to lengthen your fingers forward. As you exhale, you want to lower your glutes towards your heels. Take a big breath in. Exhale that away. One more time. Big breath. Exhale. I'm going to leave my feet where they are. Walk my arms over to the side and open up my rib cage. So that nice side body stretch. I'm going to get all the fascia around my core really opened up into the shoulder joints, into the hip joints. Come back to center. Big breath, big exhale. Ah, and then walk your arms over to the other side. Notice that I'm not doing anything with my neck. Keeping it in a neutral position and I'm breathing in and out and feeling the sensations of the body opening up and stretching. Come back to center. Take a big breath as you exhale. Come up to your tabletop. Remember you're cueing for your tabletop. Pull the pit of the belly in. Belly, pull the pit of the belly in and up. Take your gaze right to the end of your mat. And just do four or five cat cows to your breath work. So put some flexion now and extension into your spine. back to a neutral back and then I'm going to tuck my toes and drive up into my downward facing dog pedal out the back of my legs remember that if you need to you can always drop back into a child's pose or a downward facing dog <clears throat> they're restorative poses but they're also transitioning poses so you can always pop back there Take a little rest and then pick it back up where the instructor is no problem. I'm going to bend my knees and then just step right up into my Uttanasana, my ragdoll. You can bend your knees as much as you need in your ragdoll. Sway side to side if you need to. Let's open up that low back. Halfway lift to a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale. Tadasana, extended mountain pose. Bring your hands to heart center. Take a breath in. Exhale it away. Ha. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Tadasana, rise up. Standing sun A. Bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. High plank. Low plank all the way down to the belly. Take your baby cobra, your sphinx pose. Neutral cervical spine. Exhale that away. Downward facing dog. Bend your knees. Step or float in. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Tadasana, rise. Exhale, fold forward, halfway lift, cobra. Downward facing dog, bend your knees, step or float. Halfway lift, exhale, fold, Tadasana. Hands to heart center, breath in, breath out. Inhale, Tadasana, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift, Chaturanga, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Right foot comes through for warrior one on the right side. Humble warrior. Exhale it away, warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Extended side angle. Reverse Trikonasana, 
Trikonasana on the right side. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Ah. Bend your knees, step or float. Halfway lift, exhale, fold. Tadasana, bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, Tadasana, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Crescent lunge, right side. Revolving crescent lunge to the right. Crescent lunge. Anjaneyasana on the right side. Ardo Hanumasana. Half monkey pose. Low crescent lunge. Anjaneyasana. Prasarita Potatanasana. Standing straddle form. Halfway lift. Bring your left foot to the back side. Warrior one on the left. Humble warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Extended side angle. Reverse trichinesana. Trichinesana on the left, triangle pose. Warrior two, vinyasa throw. Up dog. Down dog. Take a breath. Lift your left leg, bring it through. Crescent lunge on the left side. Revolving crescent lunge. Crescent lunge. Anjaneyasana. On the left. Ardo Hanumasana. Anjaneyasana. Prasarita. Hop it in. Fold forward, ragdoll. Gorilla. Yogi squat, malasana. Ragdoll. Roll it all the way up. Take a big breath in. And exhale that away. Oh. Warmed up now. Integration series, part of your training series, your vinyasa flows. We did some warriors. We did some vitality, a little bit of twisting. Now we're going to get into those equanimity, those balance poses. We've already done trig, ankle, calf, inside the quad, both sides. We've done tree pose. We've done standing leg raise, here or here, both sides. We've done Vekasana, airplane, or warrior three. We've done those on both sides. You can go back into that playlist, pull up those balance poses, and that's that tutorial. That's what you're going to get. Now we're in eagle, standing split, and dancer. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to use a block, this. Eagle, I would say, is the hardest one to get into the flow just because you're crossing arms and crossing legs standing on one leg. Let's break down arms first. I'm going to come a little closer. 
just so that you can see me a little better. And I'm not going to use my legs yet. When we do eagle, we're going to cross our arms over just like this. So my elbows connect. And then I want to, now my arms won't reach. Your hands, for some people, will come right together. Mine attach here at my thumb. Crossing over at the elbows, grabbing my hands. My hands are gonna be up in the middle. And then what do I wanna do? I don't wanna keep them here. There's too much pressure in this joint. I want to lift them up so that my elbows and my shoulder are parallel. And I'm gonna look straight ahead. There's a little peak hole through, like an eagle eye, right? Think about it that way. That's the bind. It's an internal rotation of the shoulders. It's a very tight bind. If your shoulders uh, can't even get there, okay, no worries. Put your hands together, eagle, lift them up. Still have to be parallel, still have to be working. You can be here in eagle. That would be the first way I would do it before I start to work those binds. So the arm bind is your eagle pose. So you're either here, together, lift up. So you're not gonna see me, but I can see you because there's a little space, there's a little hole. Or I'm doing this bind. Swinging them over, bringing it around, lifting it up. When I lift up my shoulder girdle here, I lift up my body as well. Then when you go to the other side, you'll swing the other side. If you're in a yoga class, they'll say, Eagle on the right, right hand over left, eagle on the left, left hand over right. And they'll keep switching them up. You might do a couple different eagles. You'll do one on the right, one on the left. Swing, cross over, find your bind, lift up. Bring it back down, other side, switching sides, lift up. And you may find, again, right side, left side, you have more access on one side than the other. If they're both out for binds, here. You still have access, you're still in internal rotation, but it's not this crazy twist. It's like doing shoelace with your hips, right? It's the same kind of bind. The legs also bind. Now you can use a block if you're just starting out. My eagle, I'm just starting out to the left. So if my left foot's ground down, big toe mount, pinky toe mount heel, my knee stays soft, and I start to bind my foot, I can put my toes right on top of my block. Knees bind over each other, then my elbows bind over each other, lift up. Now I'm in eagle pose, and I'm practicing my balance. Pull the pit of the belly in and up, lift up, roll the shoulders back, stack your scapulae. You want to pin those shoulder blades back together as you breathe through. And then you'll go to the other side. You'll bind on the other side. You can use a block and just put it on the outside of the foot. You bind over, soften at the knee joints, and then put your foot dorsiflex right on top of your block. That's one way you can get started with eagle. If you've never done eagle, now you have access. Put your foot on a block, bring your hands together, lift them up. You are in eagle pose. Ta-da! You can do this. And then you'll practice the other side. Other foot binds over, find your block, put it all right on top. Arms together, eagle on the left. They'll just call eagle on the right, eagle on the left. If you're trying to bind your legs, and mine don't go all the way around, roll my shoulders, eagle on the right. Coming here, right arm under, attached, legs going to bind around. I'm softening at the knees. Oh, I got it. And lift up. Pull the pit of your belly in and up, and then you have to breathe here and keep everything tight. I'm going to keep lengthening through and untuck. And you go to the other side. Remember that we always work from our feet all the way up the body. And that body chain doesn't ever, ever change. Feet are stable. 
ankle is your mover. So you're going to feel movement at the ankle joint. Your knees are stable. Your hip is your mover. So you may need to adjust at the hip, right? My thoracic moves, but I'm going to stack that scapula. Can move because I have to do that bind. My neck is always going to be in a neutral position, and I'm driving the crown of my head to the top. I come eagle on the left. Left hand comes under. Lift up. And left leg goes over. Lift up. And start to breathe through. That's your eagle pose. Remember that you can use a block. Bring your hands together. Lift up. They need to be parallel. You need to be really tall in the spine, in the body. And we need to have softness in our knee joints because why? If I locked out my knee joint, I don't have oxygen coming through. Everything's going to get numb. I'm not going to have oxygen. And eventually, I'm going to pass out because I've locked my legs. Keep softness in those knee joints. We want to keep them soft so we have oxygen coming through. Tree, 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 tree on the right. Tadasana, hands to heart center, standing leg raise. On the right, bring everything in. Dekasana, airplane. On the right. Bring your hands to heart center. Eagle on the right. Shamastahiti. Very, very smooth, very nice. You can just flow right into those, but you have to know the mechanics. Shoulders are never going to dump in eagle. We want to keep them squeezed and stacked. Draw your body tall. Decide if you're working this bind or this bind. And then do I need a block or can I bind my legs? Eventually get your foot all the way around so that your toes are coming here, here, or here, pulling it in. You're gonna hold that eagle for three or four breaths. Breath in, breath out. Now what's really important about holding balance poses? Finding a focal point. Professional tip for you. We need to find a focal point. If you're watching all the energy in the room and you're seeing all of this, <laughs> you're not going to keep your balance. Find a spot on the wall. Look to the person that, if you're in a class, look to the back of somebody's head as long as they're not doing a lot of swaying. Don't follow the teacher. They're moving around. Right? Listen for their cueing, but don't look at them. If you're looking all around, you'll never hold those balance poses. Equanimity means to focus. Breath work is about drilling down in and focusing. It's not just being able to stand on one leg, but you need to be focused. Focused in on your breath work, focused in on your alignment, and then focused in on one point. That's going to help you stay on one foot without moving. If you're following a moving object, your body's going to go to energy. You're an eagle and you've got a focal point, you can stay here for a very long time. Once you start to follow energy, you're going to start to be here and sway and then eventually fall out of it. That's just a professional tip. Find a little spot on the wall, in your room. You can make, you know, take a little piece of tape and find your focal point. That's going to help you with balance. The more you do it, the better you'll get. That's just the yoga practice. With the knowledge of alignment and the cueing, you're going to get very, very good if you keep the practice up and that your body will adapt and become very flexible. It will be able to balance really, really well.
And you'll be doing things like, wow, I didn't really know that I could do that. Knowledge of where do I put my body and what do I do? How do I adapt? So adaptive meaning I may have to start at this point, but there are progressive moves that I can make to keep growing in my practice. Look at it that way. I consider not looking at a modification or a tool as a negative. It's a positive because you want to stay in alignment. If I can't bind my leg because my hips are still tight and I am throwing my hip off to get my leg around, that's not good alignment. I'm gonna hurt my knee. But if I can just put it here, put it on a block and work from here, then I can have a very pretty long and lean eagle without shifting hips, dumping shoulders, being really out of alignment, building bad habits, and then injuring myself. Cueing and alignment are first key. I always say in all of our other workouts, form over everything else. It's the same in yoga. We don't force the position. I can't force my leg all the way around my body. If my hip's tight, it's not going to happen. I can't force this perfect evil bind in my shoulders if my shoulders can't do that yet. Yet. But I can be here. I can still have a beautiful eagle and still work towards really great equanimity balance and not just balance in the pose, but balance in my life because I'm working towards with a growth mindset. I've got progressive movements as long as I stay in it and know what the cueing is, know what the knowledge is, then I'm off to the races and running and I'm learning new things, which helps build confidence which takes you further in life. Right? Growth mindset about this. Consider it's not, I can't do it. If you've already told yourself that, then that's where you're at. If it's, wow, this is hard, no worries. Use the adaptations to get you into a position that's accessible and then continue to grow in that and eventually you will be, have access and you will get there. Left side, same thing. Now right side, left side, what do we say? We're perfectly imperfect, so they're not going to look the same. But the, the alignment is the same. So you'll just have to decide. You may have a really nice bind on one side and then the other side's really tight. So you may have to do those adaptations to have access until you can get more flexible on that side, and that's okay. And so that would be the same. So right side, eagle, left side, eagle. And you're done. So you're, you'll either come to Tadasana or Shamastahiti until they call for it again. All right, so that's eagle. You've got this, keep practicing, use your tools. Use your focal point, use your breath work. Pull everything in and up. Uddiyata Bandha, abdominal lock. It's balancing poses, they require tight abs. You wanna tuck it in and pull it up. You still are breathing though, we're not holding our breath. We're using our breath work to our advantage to stay in these balanced poses. Standing split is next. Don't worry about how high your leg goes. Worry about shoulders and hips following each other and not dropping your head this way. You want to keep your head in a neutral position. Using a block, you can use a block. Roll the shoulders. I'm going to do it from the side. I'm going to ground down at my left foot, big toe mound, pinky toe mound heel. I'm going to dorsiflex my right foot so my toes are coming towards my knee to keep my knee safe. I'm going to hip hinge at my hip flexors. Now you can put your hands on a block and then work your leg up, right, dorsiflexion. What I want to do is keep my hip from opening and extending. So if I were doing 
doing it this way. Lift up. I want my leg to keep coming straight up in a neutral position, and I don't want to, I don't know if you can see that, torque it. That external rotation that drives my hip. We want to keep our hips neutral as we lift. I don't ever want to be in this position here. Standing split is just a hip hinge and a leg lift. I want to try to keep my shoulders and my hips in alignment. Now, what makes this very cool is you can work a lot of balance without having your leg have to be very, very high. And how do we do that? We bring our hands off the mat and close to our foot. So you can put your hands on your foot or your hands on your ankle. That makes it very challenging, but also very cool because I don't have to worry about extension of my legs too high and I can work this balance. So apple under the chin, hip hinge, right? I'm not squatting down. I have softness in my standing leg. My ankle's my mover, my foot is grounded. And I'm just going to hip hinge, lift, and then my hands are just right on my ankle, my standing leg. Just breathe into that. Then you can put your hands down and bring your leg down and come up. Tadasana, hands to heart center, Shamas Tahiti. That's the way to practice standing splits. Try to get your hands as close to your foot as possible while you're standing on one leg. Your ankle joint is really going to move as you work into that balance pose. Ankle joint systems, feet are stable, ankle moves. It's going to move on you. Find a focal point, breathe in and out. One side's gonna be different than the other side. So if I were to lift the other side, now my right foot's going to come down. And I've had an ankle issue on this side in my past, so it's a little harder to balance. Hip hinge, I'm working towards that. I've got my shoulders and my hips in alignment, lifting up, and then I'm just hanging onto my ankle. My hands are really close to my foot. Breathing in and out, and then bring it down. And then you can Tadasana, hands to heart center. That's the way to do it. Want to bring your hands as close to your foot, not touching the ground as you can. Now, if you're just starting out, you can put your hands on a block, standing split. And then try to tuck your head close to your foot or close to your knee. You can put your hands on the ground, standing split, hip hinge. Now I'm looking right down to my foot. I'm not tucking my head here. I don't want to make myself dizzy. Head doesn't go below the heart. Head stays above the heart, looks at the foot. And then play with it. You can put one hand down, put the other hand down, put them back on the ground, put them back on your foot. Make a game of it and practice. That's your standing split. It's it's an easy alignment. It's hard to do because it's a really a lot of balance. You're looking right towards your foot and you're trying to get your head close to your knee and your hands on your ankles. Standing split, practice it. It's a growing, growth-minded and growing asana movement. Dancer is last. I'm gonna show you from the front, I'm gonna show you from the back. And I'm gonna show you how to windmill to get into dancer. So maybe I'll do a catty corner. Dancer move, you wanna roll your shoulders back. My left hand's going to come up right by my face, right by my ear. What I want to do is I wanna spark my hands open. I see this a lot in dancer. It's not this, it's here. Spark them open. It's like you're hitchhiking, your thumbs going back towards you. My other hand, so my arm's gonna come up here. 
and I'm looking straight ahead. Remember that focal point, really important with dancer. Now I want to swing my other arm back down. I'm gonna externally rotate and have my palm come out. Again, thumb coming back, thumb coming back. So thumbs are facing towards the back. That makes sense. Spark it open, spark it open. Ground down at your foot. Big toe mount, pinky toe mount heel. Lift up, pull the pit of the belly in and up. I'm going to lift my foot, slide my hand to the inside of my ankle and grab around it. Dorsiflex my toes towards my knee because I want safety in my knee. I'm gonna look forward and then lift up. Dancer. Then I'm gonna bring it down, windmill my arms around, thumbs coming back, right? Spark it open, right by my face, down here as I ground down, going to lift my foot, slide my hand right to the inside of my ankle and lift up, dancer. Come down, windmill around, dancer. Windmill it back. The windmilling of the arm seems to be the most complicated part. We don't want to grab this part. We're not gonna get as much extension. So we already want to have our shoulder turned out this way. So when I lift my foot, it slides right in. I cup it and then lift out. If I'm doing it this way, I'm turning in weird. It's, a, it's weird here in your rotator cuff. Make it accessible this way. Thumbs go back. That's your dancer pose and practice with that. Now, you can use a yogi strap and connect your foot to the yogi strap and pull it and practice lifting your leg that way and you have a little bit of balance. If you need me to show you how to do that, I can do it in another video because I want to keep them kind of short. Um, we've warmed up. We've practiced and broken down eagle, standing split, and dancer. And now you have your equanimity, your balance poses. There's two videos for this, so tray, right? Tree pose. Eagle. Standing leg raise. Dekasana. Standing split. And dancer. So you have all of those balance poses to work on and get creative with. And you can mix and match them. Do it on the right side. Do it on the left side so that you have balance on both sides in your Karano position. That's your tutorial. Go ahead and stretch your body out if you need it. You should be very lengthened through your core with balanced poses. It really helps to strengthen that core without doing a lot of crunches. You're welcome. Don't forget your action point other than practicing is to Hit the button, like, subscribe, and share to our channel so that we can open up that algorithm, give lots of people an opportunity to see our channel about all things wellness, coffee talks on wellness, uh, sleep, meditation, stress reduction with breathing, yoga, and all kinds of workouts and healthy recipes. You can come in the kitchen with me and cook. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to keep your life balanced to work these poses. Live your life 360 and I'll see you next time. Bye.